Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Sorry the uploads have been a bit sort of up and down um, but I have been busy having a baby. I will show you right now. He's a little grumpy right now but this is the only chance I've really got to film the video. Because um, I have two other little ones to be looking after and lots of appointments to keep. So yeah this is Ezra. Um, he was born one week ago. And yesterday was my due date, so he was 39 weeks and one day, or I was, gestation wise. One of us was, or oh, maybe we both were, I don't know. Mwah. But yeah, I just, oh, oh, oh. I just wanted to introduce you to him and say, this is, this is him, he's here. He, he's been born. He is exclusively breastfed, but I will go into that more. All that sort of stuff more in our uh, one week postpartum. But yeah, so I thought I would just share my birth story with you. So how he got here, basically on, I think it was Saturday the 1st. Um, I spent the day with Ellie, which was really nice. And well, the afternoon with Ellie which is really nice and, and I was getting really frustrated because I thought like nothing was going to happen and I was going to have to be induced and have a stretch and sweep and it was all going to be horrible which I ended up being induced and having a stretch and sweep um, but I will, I will go into that yeah so we had just sat down to have some food ate food, it was really yummy and um I had the really, it was a really, really bad contraction and I was like on all fours on the floor like ah. and when I got up I had um, leaked everywhere so I went to the bathroom thinking that you know sometimes when I cough I just sort of explode um, so I thought it was just that because I coughed like at, just before I sat up so I went to the bathroom. Oh, nice. Fancy book. Yeah, I went to the bathroom and um, did my business, cleaned myself up. And I was like, all right, I'll put a pad on because it still feels kind of like it's just something's going on. And I put a pad on, stood up from the toilet, and it was still coming. So I thought, right. This is a bit, a bit m much, like more than normal. Um, normally, I don't carry on gushing afterwards. Like after I cough, it's just sort of one, one gush, um, which is super gross. But you know, it happens. Pelvic floor muscles get weaker when you're pregnant and after you've had babies. Um, so yeah, I was kind of like, okay, this might be the real thing. So I waited a little bit and it kept coming <laughs> and I was there like freaking out like oh my god my waters have gone oh, I'm not ready so I called my dad up um because Lee was just being like not like unsupportive or anything but he was like excited and, and slightly freaking out as well and I was like super freaking out <laughs> so I called my dad up and I was like I'm not ready my waters are broken and he was like I've been ready for months he was like yeah, but I'm not ready <laughs> But, um, yeah, so that was a rather entertaining conversation. Then I tried to call my mum and a couple of other people to get lifts uh, up to the hospital because I knew that they were... Because I knew that they were going to ask me to come up. So I wanted to get something in place before I rang. But nothing happened, so I called up the delivery suite and they said, come in. Um, but they didn't think there's any hurry, and they didn't think it's going to be like right now kind of thing. Um, so we had our emergency money, and we thought we'd get a bus. But it was quite late at night. We managed to get the kids babysat, um, and we went to the bus stop with a, like a towel for me to sit on. And the next bus wasn't for 40 minutes, and so I was calling, I was messaging people. 
like help do you know anyone who drives can you drive um, but people were either weren't getting back to us or didn't know anyone who could drive or couldn't drive um, so we called up 111 and told them the situation and they were like well you need to sort your own transport out and I was like it's okay the bus just got here and they were like no you can't go on the bus we're going to call you an ambulance so the ambulance got there and I was having contractions sort of five minutes apart but after we got to the hospital they carried on but they sort of slowed down um you know typical but I was still leaking a lot so and the woman had a feel and I was two centimetres dilated and she said that the baby would have a lot of hair which uh, I don't know if you can, can see but he is a very hairy headed baby sorry baby I don't mean to disturb you so basically what happened is they said I was in very early labour but not active labour and there was the possibility that they were going to send me home but they didn't want to because they knew that it was so far and it could just kick off at any second so eventually oh, eventually they sent me up to the ward um, and like pretty much as soon as I got there really the contractions were getting worse and it was really late I think it was like gone one o'clock in the morning and I was like, right, okay, they're getting worse, but they're not all that close together, they're not very regular. And I was watching this video uh, from Daily Bumps, and I was like actually getting into it, like, you know, oh, this is cool, they're having a fun time. And then I had this one really really strong contraction I was like okay, okay maybe. Oh. and I was like okay okay maybe something's going on here and um, so I kept the video going and I was just kind of like right okay I was just I was just keep an eye on things and then I had another one that was like really strong and I was like wiggle I was trying not to like call out pain or anything because like I said I don't want to just tell you the people like the least selfish way like, and um I messaged Lee saying like the pain's getting like bad and uh, he couldn't message back but he was downstairs in like the um entrance lobby bit of the hospital <laughs> bless him trying to get some sleep and um they put me on the monitor because I felt it, like the contractions were getting worse and needed to obviously monitor them and monitor baby. Um, but they weren't picking up massively well on the actual monitor, which was super annoying um, because they were really painful and it was like not going past a 40 on the monitor, which like I think a 100 or so is like a full on, full blown contraction. But yeah so it wasn't going up very high but I was in a lot of pain and a, a couple of them I think it was just two the baby's heart rate dropped um, fairly dramatically I know on one of them down to like 70 or something like from 150 so you know a big drop so they were like right I think we need to get you down to delivery because if something is going on then um, you know that's the safest place than being on the ward they can't give me a proper inspection on the ward with the dark and stuff in the room because everyone else is sleeping so they sent me down to delivery I messaged Lee saying baby's heart rate has dropped during the contraction and then obviously come down um, and meet me at deli in the delivery suite so he did and he got up there like similar time to what I did um, and they stuck me on a new one, did some more checks down there and I was four centimetres dilated but after that I sort of stopped progressing on that much uh, the contractions were getting more intense and but but they weren't really getting closer together um, so they were like right we're gonna need to give you an induction um, via like a drip 
So they came and they jabbed me with all sorts of needles. <laughs> and she tried to put a, I think it's a can cannula? I don't know. Which, whichever one goes in your hand and you put the, the drip, drip thing in, or they take your blood from. So they did that and took some blood. But when, first she tried to put it in this hand, um, and she missed the vein by like this much and it puffed up like two mountains on my hand and she was like don't look and I looked anyway and I was like ah but then she did it on uh, I think no she got someone else to come in and do it on the other hand and that all went fine but it was slightly painful you know having a needle stuck in you is not the least painful thing in the world um but yeah so they had that set up, they took some blood, and then later on they came and they put the drip in for the induction, just sort of to speed it up a little bit. And she was like, oh, in my, the first hour or two, probably nothing will happen more than is already happening. Um, unless you're really sensitive to the um, induction drip, and <laughs> within like, I think, 20 minutes, <laughs> I'd started getting like really bad, and close together contractions and I was just like dying and I could not lie on my side and then I was on my back and I was like no and it was all kicking off and she was like right you need to start pushing and I was like yeah okay I feel like I can push and um, basically I got to the point where I was pushing and I couldn't focus on pushing and breathing the gas in air because I just had gas in air um so I basically no gas in air I was just like pushing the pain I was like nope and I could like feel his head and I, I thought I was gonna like tear open and explode it was really scary um but obviously I knew that that was what was supposed to happen because I have given birth naturally before and um, yeah, I, I kept going and <laughs> his head popped out and then I did like one more push and the rest of him popped out. And f I think she said from his head crowning to all of him being out was two minutes and like, I think like three pushes because it was like two proper pushes for his head and then one for like the rest of his body. <laughs> and um, yeah so it was all once the head crowned it was all over really really quickly and i was kind of like a bit like Woo, on the gas and air when they handed him to me but it was it was just oh amazing and i i wish i would have had the camera rolling for it um but lee didn't really feel comfortable filming or getting the camera to film when i was kind of too busy having contractions to like set up a camera to film my labour um, so I didn't get it on film but I think that's the, the only thing that I would change about it because it was just perfect compared to all my other labourings um, it just went so smoothly and because with Ellie it all went really smooth until I retained my placenta it was a similar story like it all started really quickly and from the head crowning to her being out was like six minutes I think um, but then my placenta didn't come out by itself so I had to be rushed to hospital and was losing a lot of blood and with the twins the same thing happened placenta didn't come out so I was really worried that it wouldn't but it did and I think that was just like I mean, because like when they put him on me, I was like, obviously like, yay, my baby's here, I can um, stop. And then it took me a second, and that, but I was like, what about my placenta? Oh my God, what if my placenta doesn't come out? And I wasn't really paying attention to the baby at that point because I was just freaking out. Like, I didn't want to lose all that blood again because I lost so much. So I nearly didn't make it with the twins. And um, obviously everything is completely different from the C-section I had with um, Xander, but I think that's what made it more special, that it was just a natural delivery and all that this time. 
but yeah the center came out she tugged on it a couple times and I had a little push and it just plopped out and it was massive I didn't expect it to be as big as it was um, and yeah and then I had him on me and I fed him and he latched on so quick and so well and he's you do and he was born at Set, no, 6.52, so almost 7 o'clock in the morning, and he weighed 3.38 kilograms, and, um, which is apparently about 7.7, seven. and then obviously he lost, when we, when we got him weighed last, he, he lost 3%, which is apparently quite good, I can't remember how much this was to lose normally um because Xander lost like a lot because he wasn't very well when he was born and uh, Ellie was like five years ago um I'm just gonna flick this light on because it's getting dark I don't know if that makes much difference but yeah so he only lost three percent of his birth weight which is really good because he's feeding so well even though he had some jaundice and I think he's still got some but his eyes look so much whiter this afternoon, it is like such a relief because they were like yellow. Um, like the whites of his eyes. Yeah. And um, they weighed him two days ago when he was five days old and he had put back on almost as much as he'd lost. So he's now down to 0.6% less than his birth weight or he was like then so he's probably like back up to his birth weight now oh yeah and he has I'm pretty sure like um obviously it might have been how yellow his the whites of his eyes were but I'm pretty sure he's gonna have green eyes because they look nowhere near as blue as Ellie and Xander's did when they were this age and I know like their eyes can like change colour and all that, but like it's just the they have like the exact same eye colour straight from like birth to like how it changed and stuff through. And now they've pretty much still got the same eye colour, whereas his is a lot greener and like kind of almost a brown, but like it's obviously it's like green, but it's just because it's so dark it looks a little bit brown. Um so he's got Lee's eye colour, which is really cool. So yeah, that's the birth story and the announcement. So Ezra Oliver is officially part of the family. More so officially once we've registered him, but we're, we're getting there. He's only been here a week. So thank you for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Super bye.